All right, we're coming up on our last two sections here of Chapter 8, Sections 8.5 and 8.6, and we're just going to take a look at part of Section 8.5 in this video. Using properties of trapezoids and kites, we're only going to take a look at the trapezoid and a particular part of the trapezoid, some of the stuff about segments. Now, I know you've seen trapezoids in your real life somewhere out there. Maybe it was a picture of a temple, or maybe you went to the movies and got some popcorn. Or maybe you're sitting at a desk, like this one right here. In any event, you've seen trapezoids before. You probably just haven't really paid too much attention to them. But now, I bet you will. Anyway, enough about that. Let's go ahead and take a look at exactly defining what a trapezoid is and coming up with a picture and some of the different pieces that make a trapezoid a trapezoid. Now a trapezoid, here's a picture of a trapezoid, and a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. The bases are the sides that are going to be parallel. The legs are the non-parallel sides. And the isosceles trapezoid, that's going to be a very special trapezoid where the legs are equal. So in the isosceles trapezoid, that just means this part and this part, the legs would be marked as being equal that's all. Now there are three different characteristics we'll talk about with the isosceles trapezoid. And they go kind of a little something like this. And each one of them will give its own picture. It says if a trapezoid is isosceles, then each pair of base angles is congruent. So that gives you this kind of picture. Now make sure that you mark both pairs of base angles being congruent as well as the legs being congruent. Now another statement says if a trapezoid is a pair of congruent base angles, then it is an isosceles trapezoid. So if you see a picture that looks like this, then that means a trapezoid is going to be an isosceles trapezoid. Now, not only could angles A and D be marked, but instead you might have angle B and angle C marked because those are your other base angles. You only need to have a pair of congruent base angles, so either A and D could be congruent or B and C could be congruent. And then lastly, if a trapezoid is going to be isosceles, if and only its, its diagonals are congruent. So that means when you connect A to C, those two angles, that distance is going to be the same distance as from B to D. Now let's take a look at one other special part of the trapezoid, and that's going to be the mid-segment. The mid-segment is the segment that connects the midpoints of the legs of a trapezoid. Now there's three characteristics of the mid-segment. The first is that it is parallel to each base. And don't forget the bases. One is down here, and one is up here. The mid-segment is also half the sum of the lengths of the bases, and we'll practice this in a moment. But then in some textbooks, they might call the mid-segment the median. So just be aware of that. All right, so here for our first two examples, we're going to take a look at finding the length of the mid-segment in trapezoids. Now what I want to do first in example number one is actually identify which piece is the mid-segment. So I'm going to write the word mid-segment right here. And then the other two words that I'm going to write down are the other two things. I'm going to identify the bases because I've got one base up here and I've got another base down here. Now, one of the things we just learned in the previous part is that the mid-segment, which in this case is MN, that's going to be equal to half the sum of the bases. So I'm going to take the bases, in which case one is 12 and the other one is 28, and it's going to be equal to half of that. Now in this particular case, I've got two numbers there, so I can just add those two numbers together, 12 plus 28, and that gives me 40. Divide that in half, and I end up with just 20. So when I'm all done, MN has a length of 20. Not too hard. Now let's take a look at example number two. Now here, our mid-segment is the LK piece, and my bases are TW at the top and UV at the bottom. So when I set that up, same kind of idea again. I'm just going to take my time and write down each one of those pieces. So the LK, my mid-segment, that part is represented by 13x minus 8, and that's going to be equal to half of 39 plus 23. And I divide that by 2. Now, 
if I add that up, 39 and 23, that gives me a total of 62 divided by 2. So now we have the equation 13x minus 8 equals 62 over 2. And 62 divided by 2, that just gives me 31. So from here, it's going to be pretty straightforward. We'll add 8 to both sides. And then I'll get 39 on the right-hand side. And I'll get 13x on the left. And then I have to divide both sides by 13. In which case, we have x with a value of 3. So that's all there is to that. That's how you find the length of a mid-segment in trapezoids. Now, we're going to take a look at two other examples. Here, for examples 3 and 4, this time we've got to find the length of the base in the trapezoids. So in this case, here, we've got the mid-segment. I'm just going to abbreviate that MID. And I'm going to go ahead over and do the same thing in example number 4. Both of those, those are the mid-segment pieces that I have now. MN is one of my bases as is this bottom piece right here. So again, all I'm going to do is set up the equation where 23, because that's my mid-segment, that's going to be equal to half the sum of the bases. So when you write that MN, we don't know what that is yet, but we do know the other base is 27. All of that divided by 2. Now in this case, we've got a variable in the numerator. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by 2, or 2 over 1, if you want to think about it like that. Now 2 times 23, that ends up giving us 46. So that's going to be on the right hand, left hand side, and then these 2's, they'll cancel out. So on the right, we'll just have MN plus 27. Now I'll subtract 27 on both sides, and when I do that, I end up with 19 for the length of MN. So that's one way we could find that base of MN. Now similarly, I'll do the same kind of thing over for example number 4. In this one, our mid-segment ZY, that is a value of 11. So I'm going to write down 11 equals, now my two bases, one of them is has a value of 13, and the other one has 2x plus 5. That's for GF. All of that divided by 2. Now there's a couple different ways that you can kind of approach this. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and clean up my numerator. And when I do that, I'll combine the 13 with the 5. And that will give me 18 plus 2x. All of that divided by 2. Now from here, there's kind of two ways you can go. If you recognize that both 18 and 2x are even, then you can simplify the right-hand side simply by dividing 2 into each one of those. Because remember, 18 plus 2x over 2, you can separate that to 18 over 2 plus 2x over 2. So you're going to divide both of those by 2. You'd end up with 9 plus x on the right-hand side. On the left, we still have our 11. Now when we subtract 9, we'll end up with 2 for the value of x. So that's the value of x, but I wasn't done because they actually wanted me to find the length of the base. So the length of the base, gf, because I know he, that has a length of 11, or a length of 13, but gf, so I'm going to have to plug the 2 back in. So I'm going to have 2 times 2 plus 5. When I multiply and add, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5. GF has a length of 9. All right, so for these kinds of problems, you just have to decide if you're looking for a base, like in examples 3 and 4, or in examples 1 and 2, if you're looking for the value of the mid-segment. So that's how you set up these kind of problems. And in our next video, we'll go ahead and take a look at trying to find information regarding different angle things in the trapezoid. So that's it for this video. We're just taking a look at lengths of bases or mid-segments in the trapezoid. That's it for now. I'll see you for the next example soon. Peace.